life Whether you're ready or not Sometimes it's rough And it takes all that you've got But he's been here Just waiting for you to knock So take his hand Hi, welcome to Life on the Rock, and tonight we have the Life Runners on. We have Pat Castle and Charla Cloutier. They are just off a half marathon running for life to raise awareness, to raise funds, uh, to pray, to offer up uh, their sufferings and struggles with running for the pro-life movement. So they're going to share their zeal and faith with us tonight. Okay. Good to see you, Doug. You too, Butter. What you been up to? Well, um, just out there on the battlefield fighting a good fight, I guess, yes. I hope, yeah. and pray, you know. Yeah. Uh, no, things are a little calmer right now. I'm not traveling quite as much right now. Getting ready for 2015. We're going to be, oh no, I'm sorry, we're in 2015. Get ready now for what's coming up. Yeah. We're going to be um, doing a lot of battle ready rallies in uh, Wisconsin, Indiana, um, Kansas. Um, uh, connect, we're working on Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just, it's exciting to see things grow. A lot of people out there just really clamoring mm -hmm. to want to engage in that spiritual fight, which is what tonight's show is, is very much about. Right, right. You know, and I know what we're going to be talking about in this first segment about, again, the battle against family, the battle against life, the battle against relationships, especially in the area of marriage. Right, and yeah. we want to encourage our young people to discern carefully, right, the call to marriage and mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to work at that vocation, to, to embrace it, you know, if you feel called to it, because less and less young people today are getting married. That, to me, is a terrifying prospect, mm -hmm. you know. We need people to get married, have families, you know, and, and, and there's this belief today that cohabitation is a good preparation mm -hmm. for marriage. You know, sadly viewing it almost like you're test driving a car. Yeah. And to put marriage off further too. Right. You know, wait till right. later after you've test driven the relationship. Right. Yeah. right. I know Jason Everett goes after this concept of, oh, we're looking for this compatibility, you know, and I remember he just cut through it and said, you're incompatible, you know, I'll, I'll break the news to yeah. you that, you know, you're going to disagree on so yeah. many different things. You're marrying a sinner. Right. I mean, that, that, right. you know, you're going to be marrying somebody who, who, who has struggles, who has yeah. ups and downs. And who you marry on day one is not going to be the exact same person five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years down the road. There, there, there are changes that happen. The, incompa the, the compatibility part is, uh, is, is a misnomer. It's a myth. Right. And, it, and the essence of love is sacrifice. It's commitment, you know, being mm -hmm. committed to this person and growing together and serving the other. So it calls you out of yourself right. because they're just not feeding you and what you think you know you need and I mean I say we struggle just to find peace with ourselves let alone yeah. <laughs> you know, find a person perfect peace with somebody else right, but right. you know the facts on cohabitation secular studies have shown that it does nothing in terms of helping a couple get married later in fact every every in every significant way it hurts that marriage you know that that mm -hmm. is to follow you know if they if they have a goal for that cohabitating couples have more disagreements than married couples, they have more domestic violence, they have more infidelity, they have more abuse, alcohol and drug abuse, more breakups, increases the likelihood of divorce later. So if you co cohabitate before you get married, you, are, you have a, an 80% greater chance of getting divorced mm. than a couple that did not. So that is completely opposite of the mindset of the world. And oftentimes, you know, women, I think, will give in to this cohabitation setup because they have an eye for marriage. They want to get married, but they don't realize they're really hurting themselves. Right. And in many ways, sadly, the man's kind of, sadly, could be getting what he wants in terms of, like, sleeping together. But she is not getting what she wants in terms of, like, a, a stable uh, marriage yeah. and family. A strong commitment. Right. Yeah. yeah right. It goes on and on, yeah. And as the years go by, it uh, makes it more difficult, you know, as... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as, as I know the studies have pointed out that, uh, you know, the men are primarily looking for that youth and that beauty and the, and the women are looking for the stability and so forth. And then as years go by, those things shift, if you know what I'm talking about. Right. right? And so it makes it a little more challenging down yeah. the road. Yeah. Um, so again, women are losing out. Yeah, they're losing yeah. out. I mean, it's something about this that's just, you talk about the war on women. Who came up with this one? You know, it's like we're going right. after women in a very brutal way by not giving them 
what, uh, what, what, what they should be receiving, a, a committed, strong man to, uh, to protect, defend, provide, and so forth. And, you know, of course, she has that, uh, that heart to give to the man to help complete him and fulfill him. And my mm -hmm. wife does that for me. She, she, she uh, in our marriage, she, because of her, her sensitivity and her, her beauty and her strength, you know, that feminine side, right. makes me feel like a man, I feel like I can take on the world because of her, you know. Right. But it all centers around the idea of that commitment that, that comes from God first. And that, that is what's fulfilling, right? When we're right. committed to one another in whatever kind of situation, but certainly true in a marriage, and make a gift of ourselves, we invest ourselves in it, that's where we find real fulfillment. And people will report, you know, I'm sure you could say this, after being married many years, that happiness fulfillment comes in unexpected ways mm. due to that, rooted in that mm. bond, that commitment, that unconditional love that you have for one another. Mm. I mean, that's what we're talking about. Marriage is a covenant. It's not a contract in the sense that, you know, you got to measure up. If you fail to give me what I think is needs to be there in this, you know, I can break this contract. Yeah. You know, covenant, its elements are, it's, it's you know, we see in Scripture, Unconditional love, uh, it forms a, a union, a bond, you know, between the two. And the spouses make a gift of themselves, right, to the other. And it includes everything about their beings, you know, that uh, body and soul. Yeah, I mean, there really is something to, you know, living your life growing older with someone, watching them, you know, turn gray, so to speak, and realizing that this person has said yes until death to give themselves to mm -hmm. me. And I've done the same for them. And we are, we are so very much created for that. We want that, we want that radical, I call it that radical love, that radical commitment. We want it from, from our parents. We don't want our parents to love us temporarily, part-time, mm -hmm. only when things are going well. We don't want mom and dad to provide for the family only when they feel like doing it. You know, I don't want to change the kid's diaper today. I don't feel like doing mm -hmm. it. That kid needs love no matter what. You know, nobody wants that from uh, their, their boss. You don't want that from your employees. Whatever it may be, we right. are created team sports. Right. We want the, I'm, I'm in for, to the end. I'm, I'm sacrificing myself for the team. Mm -hmm. we, we, we understand these things. Why wouldn't we want this in relationships like marriage? Right. I mean, this is, this is the foundation of all society. Right. Why would we treat marriage like it's a test-driven sort of thing? Right. You know, but in the sports situation, the coach says, these are the rules of the team. And if you don't live to the rules, you're off the team. Right. right. I mean, the pressure we put, the bar we raise to those areas of life, very clear. We all understand that. Mm -hmm. But marriage, why wouldn't we do the same? And even more so because of the importance. You know, therein lies the attack from the evil one. Right. You know? And they say, well, you know, it doesn't really marry, ma matter if we're married or not. Then why not get married? For sure. <laughs> yeah. Because there is there is a difference. Right. There's a right. bond. And. And just one last point, I, we, we talked about this with Chris when he was on Chris Kayser and his book on marriage. And there's a, sometimes it can have an effect where you, as your lives become more enmeshed and maybe financially you share ownership of things and, you know, cell phones or a house or washer and dryer and all this, it makes it harder to untangle, to disentangle that. Or the, the popular phrase today is to uncouple that. Hmm. And so you might wind up getting married, being pushed into marriage due to these things, which is not a good reason to get married. You know, this right. guy might not be a good spouse for you. Yeah, but your names are on the utility bills right. together and the right. credit cards and the loan for the house. Yeah. And maybe you've had children out of wedlock and so forth. Yeah. And so you're right. I guess yeah. we kind of have to do this. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's not the best way to do it, right. to have those right. bonds come second to something deeper, something more right. sublime and profound, yeah. something of the heart and the soul that's much deeper. Right, yeah, so. and the stats you had in there are really good. The percentages of people, 80 percent uh, greater chance mm -hmm. of divorce. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you know, and, and then you bring contraception into the into the situation as well, and it, and it complicates and makes things even worse. Um, it's kind of funny because we keep going back to that same thing. God seems to know what He's doing when He arranges these things. Right, right. Yeah, we're wise to listen to the to the Lord, especially through the church, and do what He says. Right. So as Doug mentioned, you know, we're created out of love for love, and that's where we find fulfillment. A committed relationship bonded in marriage that we can find that fullness of love. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back uh, with the pro-life runners. So don't go away. Back in a moment.
I just got done running. Had to run in here. Just sat down because we're doing a show on the Life Runner. So I just, I was just, okay, I wasn't really running. So, hi. Yeah, exactly. Hi, I'm Doug Barry along with Father Mark. We're the Rock House Compadres. Thank you for joining us in the Rock House for Life on the Rock, the best place you could be. We've got a fast show tonight because we're going to run right through it. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Pat, good to have you back Likewise, on. Pat Castle so. here. And Charlotte Cloutier. It's a good Irish name. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Let's just get right into it. Life Runners has been around since, I think, 1812, 1813. <laughs> is that when you started? 2008. Oh, 2008. Well, pe though people did run for their life back then. Oh, yes, they did. <laughs> and a lot's happened since we were on the show in July 2012. And one of those things is you used to be in the Air Force. You just retired, you said, about five, six months ago. Five months ago. ago. Okay, and you were retired at what rank? Lieutenant Colonel. I was a hospital commander. And, you know, interesting enough, my role in the Air Force was I was a weapons of mass destruction defense officer. And I thought, wow, you know, how am I going to use that when I leave the Air Force? Well, God obviously had this figure out because yeah. abortion is a much larger weapon of mass yeah. destruction. It has claimed more lives than all the weapons of mass destruction in the history of the world combined. And considering, you know, governments will, will band right. together to fight against right. weapons of mass destruction, but governments will band together to defend the right for a woman to kill a child That's in a womb. Right. It's, it's, it's an incredible irony there. So I continue to stand for yeah. the defense of life. Let's go back first of all, and uh, just a little, little background on, on Life Runner, how the whole, how, how the Life Runners got started. Uh, give a little mm -hmm. background, get everybody up to speed on that. So you and I have a shared experience where we've both thought it was a good idea to run up Pikes Peak. Amen, brother. So I did that in 2006. I had an encounter with St. Padre Pio at the top of that mountain. It's a story I've told on EWTN radio a few times, but in short, when I checked the results the next day and the person that was cheering me those last 10 minutes, there wasn't anyone there for a minute and 47 seconds, hmm. but somebody was praying a novena for my support to make it to the top of the mountain under three hours. Instead of the, the winner's picture on the results page, I felt kind of bad because the picture of me collapsed at the top of the mountain with a caption that said, my, my last line was, come Holy Spirit, carry me forth. Well, St. Padre Pio also gave me a nudge. That catalyzed a little bit different outlook on running. It went from just running and make it prayerful to making it redemptive. Yeah. And so pointed that through the Life Group. The Life Group got an action arm called the Life Runners. That was in 08. In 2010, there were 17 of us. In uh, 2011, there was 170. When I was on your show in July 2012 with uh, Jeff Grabowski, there was about 300 of us. So in two and a half years, there's now 3,000 of us. So thanks a lot for that big amplified message for yeah. life. And a lot's happened since then. So a few months after that July show, we went to St. Louis, the Life Runners, and we had the largest team to ever form, not just at the St. Louis Rock and Roll uh, Marathon, but ever at a Rock and Roll Series Marathon. There was 252 of us. And this is a nice shot of Jeff Paul's our VP of operations for Life Runners coming across the finish line. That's the St. Louis Review. And then the Columbia Magazine picked up that story and it went out in the Knights of Columbus to 1.6 million homes with a story about Life Runners. So you gave us some good traction. Then of course, Jeff Grabowski was on because we were talking about the first time ever that we would relay across the nation for pro-life. And we kicked off at the Brooklyn Bridge in New York City, and we kicked off at the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. And for 40 days, 10 hours of daylight, running and walking, 4,089 miles, 1,103 5Ks later, we met in Sioux Falls, South Dakota on Palm Sunday and completed America's first relay across now, across the nation. for people who don't quite understand, <laughs> uh, I mean, that's amazing stuff. And I know we're going to talk a bit more about the relay because yeah, you expanded it. Expanded it. But for people who don't fully understand what the Life Runners is all about, you talk about teams mm -hmm. showing up and the numbers growing. Yes. What What is the, the whole concept of Life Runners? So we there's, there's three pillars to Life Runners. We run as a prayer. And we're going to look at that creed later in the hour and pray it. Um, we also, we run for awareness. And we run for awareness because we have a simple but powerful message on our back. So all life runners have remember the unborn, Jeremiah 1.5, and Jeremiah 1.5 is that God knew us even before we were in our mother's wombs. And so the concept of being a life runner is anyone can be a life runner. We have ages one to 88, and you might be thinking, wow, one-year-olds are running marathons and 88-year-olds are running marathons. Well, in their own right they are, so whatever, people are able to do, even if it's a matter of putting that shirt on and walking out the front door and going to the grocery store 
If that's mm -hmm. their pro-life marathon to represent with Remember the Unborn, they are a fully qualified life it's runner. It's tough to find running shoes for a one-year-old. <laughs> it is. I've looked for that. It is. And they're, they're not, they're not, it's hard to try them on too. You know? yeah. Agreed. You tough. can't get them to walk around in them to see how yeah. they feel. Sure. Okay, but, no, but the actual races, so people will, when you say a team shows up mm -hmm. for a marathon, for yeah. example, or for a race, um, what, what's that like? Okay, so you so got a bunch of people running around in blue shirts. Yep. I mean, but when you talk about them as a yeah. team, what, yep. what, what does this mean? So how it makes us a team is there's a lot of individuals that might run for a pro-life cause or for their local pregnancy resource center, but we actually gather, and that's what you're describing. I mean, that's the essence of team. We actually team up, and we team up through a series of events. So we're going to cue off. The picture on the screen right now is actually the March for Life 5K, and that leads off our, our running series, the 2015 running series, on 22 January mm -hmm. at 8 a.m., the morning of the March for Life. If, if marching isn't enough for the 600,000 pro-lifers they are going to show up. If you also want to do a warm-up and go do a 5K walk or run or cheer, we welcome you to come to Haynes Point at East Potomac Park at 8 a.m. And then two days later, we're going to do the inaugural Father Malloy 5K at the San Francisco Walk for Life at 7 in the morning in Golden Gate Park. Mm -hmm. And again, hope people come out and do a warm-up for that Walk for Life. You can walk and run and cheer. And then after that, right around the corner, it's going to be Ash Wednesday, and we are going to do our third annual annual relay across the nation. As I described, it kicks off at the Golden Gate Bridge, the, the Brooklyn Bridge, and this year, as you alluded to, yeah, Doug, we're, were you starting Corpus two Christi, yeah. Texas, for a South Arm, and Grand Forks, North Dakota. And all will converge again on Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which is the center of our country. Um, and so, yes, that's, that's our series. We also added in 2014, America's first ever pro-life half marathon. And I heard you, Father Mark, allude to that in your opening comments. So uh, this past fall in 2014, we had 300 participants, 11 states, and it had never been done before that a race had, a half marathon had pro-life in the name. So we were America's first pro-life half marathon. And we're gonna do that October 24th in 2014. And if that's not exciting enough, do you have we're this going, down it's, yeah, right there. If that's <laughs> not, we're going to Vegas. So we're going to Vegas <laughs> in no, November the 15th. We are, imagine uh, how countercultural. Is, is that to try to raise money? So, yeah, right. <laughs> the casinos are and sure enough, and we do raise money. So oh, third, the third, you know, we had mentioned that we run as a prayer, we run for awareness, but we also raise money for pregnancy help centers. And we do it in different ways. We do it through the Knights of Columbus Ultrasound Initiative. By the way, just a few months ago, they hit their 500th ultrasound they placed. Mm. That's $26 million in life-saving equipment across the nation. 500 ultrasound machines. 500 ultrasound machines have been placed by the, by the Knights in the last, yeah. I think it's there on year four or five of that program. Mm. And we have helped do the uh, now, that initiative. And not everybody who, who joins Life Runners are actual runners. Because the idea right off the bat, and, I mean, you mentioned going to the grocery store and one-year-olds yeah. and 88 and so forth. Right. But you, you, uh, this is not something that is specific to athletes. Because, Charlotte, you're not, you didn't start out as a runner when you got involved in no, this. No, actually, I was a golfer <laughs> my whole life. And and is, that, is, that a, is that really a sport? Is that really oh, a sport? Oh, well, I would <laughs> say so. I'm sorry. So, I didn't, don't, don't, take that, don't get upset with me on that. <laughs> three, <laughs> around, okay? three holes in one she has, too, by the <laughs> way. Three. Do you really? I do. Now, now, yeah. Okay, is this golf golf or putt-putt golf when you're talking three holes in one? Well, I, I play a mean putt-putt game, too. But, <laughs> okay, but some real you. golf. Sure. Yeah, but um, actually, I saw one of my friends in New York City city wearing the Remember the Unborn shirt and um, I didn't really consider myself a runner at that point but joined the team just in time for America's first across America relay or Life Runners first across America relay and kicked that off at the Brooklyn Bridge and it was just so exciting to be surrounded by teammates yeah. and sharing this message in New York City where we just have so much abortion and and there's just a lack of a, a a different message. Um, mm -hmm. So we want to be that that counter to so golfer, what the culture is feeding us. Golfer to runner. So golfer to the Across America Relay to then running my first marathon last fall at Air Force with the team. Yeah, about 200 yeah. of us. Wow, yeah. God bless you. That, that's okay. So transformation has taken place. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they're working out CrossFit sort of stuff. Oh, to get I haven't shape gone that things. far yet. Okay. Well, we'll maybe one on day. That. Yeah. Because okay, I know the father. As long as yeah. I can wear the shirt. Father and the Franciscans. <laughs> I'll do a lot of CrossFit around here. <laughs> Good father. Yes, is, is that the Pikes Peak Marathon? The Air Force Marathon? The Air Force Marathon was in Dayton, Ohio. So oh, we are at okay. Wright Patterson Air Force Base, and 200 of us. We're on the base, running on a federal installation with Remember the Unborn. So religious freedom, there's still hope. They didn't kick us off. And we were the largest team gathered for the Air Force Marathon. And how does the race 
across America there. How does that work? Do y'all y'all have a van and stuff? You so it's time when you sign up for your 5K leg, and we you know folks can get on right now and get on and sign up. There's plenty of legs still open for 2015, and you mm -hmm. sign up for these 5K segments, and it has a starting time and it has a map, and so it has a little map that you go and you stand and at that time at that spot and. You've got a runner that's going to pull. And you carry up, the baton. And you carry the baton. Oh, yeah, wow. we've got the baton. Yeah, so. pass it over. You know. Okay. Yeah. So you start with four batons then. Four batons. Then you bring them north, south, west, and east arms, and bring them all the way to Sioux Falls, South yeah. Dakota. Yeah. There's the map. That's incredible. All right. And for people to get want to get set up and want to be part of this, they just go where? What website? They go to liferunners.org. Okay. And step one is to sign up to be a life runner. Order your shirt. And then you can go to the relay link, uh, liferunners.org. There's a relay button and sign up for your 5K leg. And what it goes to, our, our national beneficiary is the Vitae Foundation. And the Vitae Foundation works with pregnancy resource centers and does messaging and marketing, research-based messaging and marketing to get more abortion vulnerable, abortion-minded mothers to those centers. And Vitae means for those Latin listeners? Latin for life. Life, Vitae is life. And I think we're gonna show at one of the breaks, one of the commercial commercials that we do, one of our culture changing commercials that will demonstrate what the research, research has shown. And kind of in a nutshell, to boil it all down, uh, I love this stat, 82% of post-abortion women said that if one person had mm. supported them, they would have chosen life. And you know, that, I know you and I talked about that earlier, because that's did. something I've asked a lot of guys, or a lot of you know, people involved in the pro-life situation, what uh, percentage of abortions would not occur if a man stood up and got involved, any man whatsoever. And it's in the two thirds, the three quarters department. Mm -hmm. And you say that really 82% say that if anybody stood anybody. up. But men really do play a key role they do. in these things. I mean, come on, man. We, we really, we, we've been silent on this stuff far, far too yeah. long. And silence is consent. That's it how is. it's interpreted yeah. by an abortion yeah. vulnerable woman. Consent. We do have the video set up right now. So we're gonna go to the Vitae Foundation right. video at this moment and you get a chance to see video on this right now. Here we go. Check it out. Pregnant? Afraid? You can handle this. It's not the end of the world. Wait, hold on. Listen to yourself. Take control. Talk to some women who can help. They know how to listen and they won't judge you or force you to do anything. They really helped me. You know? Come on, call them. They won't charge you anything and it's completely confidential. Come on, do it. Okay. Do it. I, I like what I said, I like how that video ends the way she says, come on, do it. Yeah, come do on, it. what are you waiting for? Do it. Get people out there ready to care and help you. Yeah. yeah, but that's really what it is. It's, it it is, is that kind of encouragement. It's someone stepping up. It, we're, we're far too tolerant, we're far too politically correct. We're far too, when I say tolerant, I'm talking about, <laughs> we just want to tolerate anybody and everybody's decision, even if it's destructive. Mm. Mm. Like, I want to tolerate the, the, the alcoholic, I'm going to tolerate the drug deal, I'm going to tolerate those things that are killing yourself. Yeah. It's like, that's not tolerance, that's, that's, that's uh, some of that's cowardice. You know, and I don't say that to be judgmental, because I know myself, I fall under the same challenges as to where I step up and where I don't. But it is part of the fight. Part of the battle is to really look inside of ourselves and ask ourselves, are we really engaging in those, those areas where, where the evil one is really trying to tear us apart? And our own weak human nature just gives in to the distractions of the world or the, or the dangers that, are, that, uh, you know, that, that, that can really undermine our society as a whole. So Life Runners Vitae Foundation, explain the separation or the distinction, the unity, yeah. how are these two working together? Because so, you're president of the Vitae Foundation. Right. And so the Life Runners, which I co-founded in 2008, as we mentioned, we, our fundraising goes to pregnancy help centers. And with those 3,000 Life Runners, they support their local centers. And what the Vitae Foundation does, we have 74 centers coast to coast that we support. And we support with the messaging, the research base. The, the, the messaging is based on not what we think should work as you know, looking from the outside in, but we've interviewed and surveyed over 1,500 post-abortion mothers and said, hey, what would it have taken for you to choose life? Mm -hmm. And we've garnered those insights and we've put those into marketing and messaging, like the video that we just saw. Mm -hmm. And one of the messages was with support that we keep reinforcing. So the Life Runners, we're uh, giving funds for ultrasound machines, for messaging and marketing campaigns that the Vitae Foundation 
does. So mm -hmm. that's the, the great teamwork. And Vite has uh, sponsored the March for Life 5K, so they do all the awards and a lot of the fees that go under for the park fees. They also are the sponsor for the Father Malloy San Francisco Walk for Life 5K. Mm -hmm. They also co-sponsor with Life Runners, America's first pro-life half marathon last year. Wow. So a great teammate. Together we were winning. I love the wristband that Vite has I gave to you, Doug. That red wristband, mm -hmm. Vite Life, and then together we are winning. I have a lot of um, you do, looking <laughs> hip. So that's me, Tay. <laughs> I'm hip in my, <coughs> hip. about 50 years old right now. How are your hips, Doug? My hips are feeling <laughs> good, brother. <laughs> I know they are after going up the Pikes Peak. Ever, ever, since, ever uh, since the Pikes Peak run, yeah. Uh -huh. All right, yeah. we're going to run to a break right now. We'll be back with more from Life Runners and, uh, well, who knows, all kinds of good stuff. And where, where they're going with this and how you can get involved and be part of this uh, really incredible way to support life. Don't go away. We will be back after this. We're just going to run for a moment. We'll be right back. <laughs> Finished it. Okay, yes, we ran Pikes Peak at different times. I did it in 91, you did it in 06. 06, 07, and 08. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, you did it three times. Okay. <laughs> three times, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you did the whole marathon? Okay. And seven and eight. And how so long did it take you? Up and 12, 13. Or 13. Up and 13. Yeah. Down. And, and it's almost all on a trail. The first mile or two or whatever Correct. in the streets of Manitou Springs, then you hit Bar Trail. And all of a sudden yeah. it goes, whoa, and everybody <laughs> bottlenecks, and you're like, ah. The, you know, it's pretty incredible, though. It's a really amazing race. Um, just the experience of it all is You incredible. don't like telling people your marathon time on that one because it doesn't no. line up. Like, no. hey, what'd you do it in? Oh, four hours and 51 minutes. Hey, that's oh. a pretty good time. Yeah, that's, yeah, mine was six hours. You did four, four hours, hours and 51, 51 minutes. Okay, well, that's wow. pretty good. <laughs> Took me four hours to get up and two to get down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you add in gravity, of course, you know, it speeds <laughs> things up. So, now did your toenails turn black? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you're, as you're going downhill, your right. feet are being Pounding. jammed into the front of your shoes. So your big toes, toenails on both big toes turn black. Redemptive running, lots of opportunities it's, yeah. for it. Mm. <laughs> time for prayer, right? That's it. Yeah, my <laughs> wife and I got in the car, our little 88 Dodge Omni, and drove seven hours back to Lincoln, Nebraska that night. So you imagine how I, because I'm oh, not yeah. a runner, so and I only trained for about a month and a half for this thing. You crawled so. to the front door. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> just getting out of the car to rest stop mm -hmm. or just trying to take a break, put gas in the car, just trying to get out of the car. Mm -hmm. Just push me out, honey. Mm -hmm. Clunk. So, Doug, the good news is this is a team that the slower you are, the better you are. Because and I like to say someone that's going slow, you can read the. That's more time to read and more time to pray. Yeah. More time to pray, <laughs> more time for people to read, remember yeah. the unborn. Yeah. So the slower the life runner, the better the life well, runner. Well, and we let's, point, let's point that out the redemptive running, the redemptive part of it, because mm -hmm. because I, I know a, a friend of mine, Justin Fatika, he runs Hard as Nails Ministry, and we've had him on the show, and he's a very intense guy. And he started a workout DVD. He put a DVD together, and he's this is the only workout that's not about you. And he says at the beginning of the workout, you've got to find a prayer intention, and then the entire time you're working out, you're thinking of who you're offering That's it up it. for. That's, That's similar it. in some ways similar. here. Yeah, explain why that works, why redemptive mm -hmm. suffering and how we can actually offer these things up like running. Because for the people out there right now listening or watching who are thinking, I never want to do something like that. Yeah. You know, I just can't do that. It'd be too painful. You're saying, well, that might make it more effective Absolutely. and more beneficial. It makes it holy. So, you know, just putting that shirt on, we found, you know, we look at the shirt and go, great, pro-life, remember the important. Some people, just putting that shirt on and walking out in public, going to school, to church, to the grocery store, that makes them a great life runner. They're out in public, they're helping to change hearts and minds when people see that life-affirming message. Mm -hmm. Lots of life runners have stories where someone's come up and said, hey, wow, you know, love your shirt and just want to start a conversation because this topic of abortion in America, since one in three American women will have an abortion by the time they're 45, that's a lot of shrapnel 
in our culture. And you talked about families in the beginning. That is shrapnel in the family. That hurts the family. That one out of five pregnancies ends in abortion. Charla in New York City, 37% of pregnancies end in abortion. So when you have that kind of pain out there, now I'm coming back to your question with redemptive running. Yes, having something positive and affirming to reach out to people that are hurting and have the opportunity to engage them with such a soft, positive message like just remember the unborn right. that is redeeming and then offering it up as a prayer that sacrifice of whether it's just hard for you to put the shirt on and go oh i can't believe i'm walking out you know into public with this shirt on to the mall or around the block yeah. or if it's on a hard run up pike's peak mm -hmm. and offering it up as a prayer See, and, redemption and and that that kind of goes even with this shirt here my my proud to be a nazarene t-shirt we do through battle ready mm -hmm. and i've had people say well i would never wear that because right. it, it makes you a target you know to to you know radical islam out there it's like well look, the prayer. point is it's it's a courageous thing mm -hmm. to show solidarity with our brother, christian brothers and sisters who are suffering and dying mm -hmm. at the hands of of yeah. isis and other islamic you know radical terrorists out there and so it is it, it does take courage to do these things like a life runner shirt like mm -hmm. uh, you know remember our Christians that are suffering and dying and there does have to be a certain right. something deep inside the heart Redemptive. and soul now Charlotte you you did you always have this feel uh, this, this strength for for the pro-life movement were you raised this you know, way I was tell raised us about in a pro-life family yeah I grew up in Florida and then um, really where, where got, in Florida oh a little town called Niceville well, that's a nice town yeah, yeah so I got nice. a good start there um, that's a nice ville to grow up in <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, you know, moved to New York City after college. And what and took really you to New York City from uh, Niceville? Just a, a from job. From Niceville to a, New York. That's kind of like an That's true. Yes, yeah, so I went to college in New Jersey and then got a job in New York City working as a management consultant. Wow. Um, so not really working in pro-life, but in my free time going out and praying on the sidewalk yeah. in front of a couple abortion facilities in New York City where... Um, we have at least three in New York City that perform more than 10,000 abortions a year, yeah. which is, you know, staggering numbers to think about. And so, you know, spent a lot of Saturday mornings praying the rosary in front of these abortion facilities, trying to reach out to mothers going in, um, and then moved into even counseling and volunteering in one of the mm -hmm. pregnancy help centers and really understood that there is this battle going on yeah. that a lot of people aren't talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and so after many years of working as a business consultant, um, God had some other plans for me. Actually, ran into Pat last year's March for Life. Anybody and get hurt? <laughs> um, no, no, but it, it definitely <laughs> it was it was freezing. Um, and uh, we just got talking more about what can I do for pro life. And God was really pulling me that in that direction. And I was already a Life Runner teammate at that point, but just started doing more and more and then eventually became the national chapters coordinator. Wow. So now working with 65 chapters across the country, yeah. um, even in foreign countries now, so. Where did you, where did you get your pro-life strength originally when you were younger? Where did that come from? Your parents, your grandparents? Definitely, I would say my parents, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to Catholic school for many years, mm -hmm. and I can remember, I have a vivid memory of being out on the street holding a sign for a life chain and cars were honking mm -hmm. for life. And I just had this thought like, why wouldn't you honk for life? Like, is there really another um, perspective out there? I didn't really understand it, so. I think you mentioned the part about this being a battle. And uh, I, I think a major part of that, is it not? You said nobody's really talking about it. And that's a big part of the battle is just trying to keep it silent, yeah. keep it mm -hmm. off the radar. Cause yeah. you don't see it as you know, military, you know, uh, what, were you retired at what rank? Lieutenant Colonel. Lieutenant Colonel. So you seen enough, been around enough, and how long were you in? 25 years. 25 years. So you understand the whole intel aspect of yeah. a military operation. And if we don't see an enemy coming, if they're not on the radar screen, we don't know what to defend or fight against yeah. them. Right. And pro-life movement, if people don't realize that this is going on, like the statistics father brought up at the beginning on cohabitation and marriage, you know, we start hearing this information coming at us, that intel gets to us, and all of a sudden we start thinking, okay, time to push the sleeves up and respond. You know, in, in, the, in the right proportionate way. So, so you see this, uh, you know, wearing shirts and running and going out in public and so forth as being a major way to respond. Now, chapters, explain the chapters. Yes. And overseas now. And overseas, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we're working with 65 chapters across the country and in a few foreign countries. And it only takes five Life Runner teammates to start mm -hmm. a new chapter. So we do have a lot of unattached individuals that aren't with chapters right now, but um, we, we try to have at least five to form and okay. they do monthly events and they can run together and well, they can and have and fellowship. Look, let's back dinners. up just a minute, Charlotte. Yes. So the, the listener out there or the viewer right now is thinking, okay, start a chapter. It's a running chapter. I know guys that run. 
I know people that are want to be pro life, and whether they're avid runners or weekend mm -hmm. runners or, right. you know, just they, they walk fast, whatever. Um, what do they have to do to to say they want to investigate the next step? To, to forming a chapter. What sure, do do? so the first step is to sign up to be a life runner to get your, your jersey and mm. then just send us an email and we'll set you up. So go to it, liferunners.org. It's very org. easy, you just have to have five teammates and commit to um, monthly, monthly events. Activity. Yeah, okay. just to get out there wearing your shirts and raising awareness, okay. prayer. And there's and 65 it, chapters right now. Mm -hmm. right. Wow. And it could just be an apostle to prayer too for some, right? It could be, yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. That's important to remember. Mm -hmm. Right, right. There you go. Yeah, so it doesn't necessarily have to mean, you know, you got to don the Nikes and, and get out there in the streets right. and pound the pavement. Yeah. You know, it's just let's get together and pray because that's a major part of any of these missionary efforts, any missionary effort, mm -hmm. is the prayer support and prayer team that's got so, to go with it. You know, St. Jose Maria Scriva said, deep prayer first, religious action is a distant second. You know. As we talked about, we want to be the prayer, run as a prayer. Don't forget, you know, when I start each run, I say, Lord, help me to run as fast or as slow as you need me to today. And that kind of humility entering into, God can use that. If we're just saying surrender prayer at the beginning, that becomes redemptive when you offer it up. Yeah. And that's and, the spirit of life. Right and and that's, a, that's a detachment attitude as well. Mm -hmm. Lord, let me run as fast or as slow as you want me to run today. To. So when you're having a bad day and you're not feeling well, and you don't really want to push yourself, you can just simply say, well, I guess the Lord wants me to run <laughs> slow today. Is that kind of? So more <laughs> cars can see my jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the a win-win. The Lord wants me to walk now. <laughs> oh, so people can read my shirt more. It's, yeah. it's a win. This is the team for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> that works. That works. We're going to run to a break here. We've got another video we're going to watch from our friend Chris Stefanik. Uh, Chris has been on the show several times, and he's got some great information uh, he likes to throw out there in these quick little videos. So we've got another one very pertinent to what we're talking about here right now. So we're going to check out this video on pro-life, and we will get back to more from Life Runners. So don't go away. Don't run away, <laughs> because he'll chase you down, and he's fast. Back after this. I'm in Washington, D.C. at the annual March for Life, about to speak to 8,000 young people. Down the street at the Verizon Center, they're preparing the room for 18,000 young people. Now, the only reason we don't have more people at these events is that they're maxed out. There's no seats left. The Diocese of Arlington put in a, on two different events for 17,000 kids. This young generation is pro-life. You know, young people have a way of seeing past all our rhetoric when it comes to this debate. The science is undeniable. A fetus is a human life. A baby at 18 days has a heartbeat, brain waves at 42 days, all body systems present at eight weeks, fingernails at 11 weeks, has vocal cords and can cry at 12 weeks, can feel pain at 20 weeks, and at 23 weeks can survive if delivered instead of being aborted. The ethics of abortion, it's, it's undeniably clear. The impact on women's become clearer and clearer over time too. A book recently written called Complications cites 650 papers, most of them are medical journals, that shows that abortion has a negative impact on almost every aspect of a woman's health, from infertility to autoimmune disease, to breast cancer, to mental health disorders. By the way, if that's you, check out Project Rachel, hopeafterabortion.com, because there's always hope. The medical community is clear. Abortion is never necessary to save a mother's life. Now, sometimes there's a procedure that has to be done that indirectly results in the death of the baby. Like if a mom needs chemotherapy and it indirectly results in the death of her fetus. Or if there's an ectopic pregnancy and a part of the fallopian tube that the baby's in has to be removed. But that's not the same as an abortion. It's not the same as directly killing that child. And if it sounds like I'm splitting hairs here, you know what, it's pretty important to split hairs when it comes to a human life. But all that aside, the number of abortions performed that are even pretending to be to help the mom and save her life are astronomically small, next to the number of abortions done at a as, as a matter of convenience. Or, or worse, the number of abortions done because women are ill-informed and they truly feel like there's no other option. And they didn't go to a crisis pregnancy center but found their way into a Planned Parenthood instead by accident. There's always another option. Life is always an option. 
And if you don't want your baby, someone does. In July 2013, Father Tom Vanderwood in, in Virginia learned of a couple that was about to abort their Down syndrome baby and they couldn't find someone to adopt. He posted it on the parish Facebook page, got about 900 emails, got so many phone calls that had to have volunteers come in and man the phones. Hundreds of people said, if you don't want your baby who even has Down syndrome, we do. Life is always a choice. We forged the United States into a culture of death, a place where it's survival of the fittest. If you come in my way and you're smaller than me, you have to go, because the human race was made for more than that. You know what else is crystal clear? This is the generation that's going to end it. Uh, we're going to skip our last break, just go right to, uh, back to here, because we, we've got so much information we really want to get out. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're just joining us, uh, I'm Doug Barry, along with Father Mark. We are the Rock House Compadres. This is Life on the Rock. We have with us uh, Life Runners, once again, uh, Pat Castle and uh, Charla Cloutier. Cloutier. That's right. I got it. Okay, very good. And you guys doing fantastic work. You're running 65 chapters in the U.S. and abroad. Uh, this has grown from... Uh, 30 people roughly your first one to 3,000 now yeah. and it's going to grow it's going to continue to grow because is, is the video even show with Christophonic there we are we are really understanding more and more as the information continues to to get out um, just how serious this battle is but it is a battle that its its root problem is is spiritual of course because you have the, the it is John Paul II said back in 76 before he became Pope John Paul II when he was still Carol with Tia uh, the, the Cardinal, he said that we are entering into a time when we're up against the final battle between the Antichrist and Christ, the anti-church and the church, and the culture of life and the culture of death. And he said, he said though, though God knows this and this is his, in his plan, we must respond. Yeah. He said that in 1976. Yeah, it's a spiritual battle. I yeah. mean, let's admit it. Abortion is the crown jewel of Satan. Abortion is the rejection of God. And even though we, we know it's a spiritual battle, the irony is in the Vitae Foundation research, what we found is when we surveyed those 1,500 post-abortion mothers that they said this, the last thing that I want to talk about when I'm in crisis is God yet. Mm -hmm. The second to last thing that they want to talk about when they're in crisis is their baby yet. What they want to talk about in, their, in crisis is themselves. And as soon as they feel that the body of Christ has reached out and put their hand on their shoulder and really made them believe that we're going to be there to help them, then guess what they're ready to talk about? Their baby. Mm -hmm. And when their baby's safe, guess what they're ready to talk about? God. And this is really evangelism 101. When, mm -hmm. With missionaries, when we consider ourselves pro-life missionaries as life runners, what we've learned with this partnership and teamwork with the Vitae Foundation, there's a right way to approach our culture to lead them from where they're at to where God wants them to go. Mm -hmm. So for example, when missionaries go to Africa or wherever they go, they don't walk in and go, hey everyone, we're having a Bible study tonight. No, they go in and they rebuild a school mm -hmm. or a hospital or a church. Or bring them food. Or, or bring them care, food. Right? And then two weeks, Education, two months, yeah. they go, hey everyone, we're having a Bible study at the rebuilt church. Right. It makes sense when you think it about that way. So what's going on in the sidewalk, we said we want to talk a little bit about the sidewalk out there, whether it's 40 Days for Life or Sidewalk Advocates for Life, which I'm a program advisor for. The Vitae Foundation research is put into action through Sidewalk Advocates for Life with Lauren Musica's group. And they are applying that research all the way down the sidewalk. And what they found, based on what I just shared, is that holding a sign, you become a picketer. And they don't see that hand reaching out because you've got a sign in your hand. Mm. What ultimately you want to be if you're standing on the sidewalk as a counselor is you want these hands free. And you want to approach them and say, hi, you know, my name's Pat Castle. I took a day off of work today to help you. Are you here to have an abortion? Yes, I am. 
well, you know what? It's going to happen if you go in there. They're going to do an ultrasound, but they're not going to let you see it, and it's their policy. They're not going to let you see it because if you saw it, you might realize you have other options and have see the, the life in your womb differently, that window to the womb, the way to introduce the, the child to the mother. And we want you to have real options. So how about going across the street to the Pregnancy Resource Center or the mobile medical unit and seeing your ultrasound and then talking about the options that you have. That's how lives are saved because we have the opportunity to lean in and they'll lean in with us when you approach that way. And but those signs? It, well, and, and, if, and I suppose if a person is at the stage where, you know, look, I, I can just carry a sign, that's really where I'm at right now. The signs really need to be inviting and warm. Exactly. Saying, we care. And separate. And you're loved. And the idea yeah. is to have, so if you have a, you know, um, pray to an abortion, that's a beautiful sign. Mm -hmm. But separate that from the person that's actually going to interact with the mother mm -hmm. coming into the pray, into right. the abortion facility. And you talk about the sidewall counseling and reaching out and so forth. And Charlie, you've been involved in that a lot yourself. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I love this quote, uh, a friend of mine, Terry Barber, says is that people don't, care about how much you know until they know how that's much you exactly care. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're talking that's about. That's what I'm talking about. So this is a threat though that we're under from you know statutes and government officials and all different levels of trying to stop even this sidewalk counseling. You know, what do you see from your perspective having done this work and knowing that this, this attack is coming saying, we don't even want you sidewalk counselors out there. We don't want you even talking to these people who are coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, are you, what are you seeing as this is continuing to get a little more, little more pressure situation there? You know, I, I feel it's actually an encouraging thing to know that we're being attacked like this because mm -hmm. we're doing such good work, yeah. right? So we're making a difference there on mm -hmm. the sidewalk, reaching out to women. And um, I mean, all of the, the buffer zone laws and all the legislation to put restrictions on how much we can say to women. I mean, I ask those people making those decisions to go out there to mm -hmm. the sidewalk and to, to encounter what actually happens, you know, the conversations that are taking place, the life-affirming options that are being yeah. offered, the free help, the confidential services. You can go across the street from pre Planned Parenthood to the Pregnancy Resource Center and get your free pregnancy test, get your ultrasound, yeah, help get them. things that are actually going to help you versus, you know, this very destructive life choice that the abortion clinics are offering. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And it, you know, Life Runners is an opportunity to put your pro-life faith in action, period. There are so many great, this is yet another opportunity, and you can double down. It doesn't matter what ministry you're involved in, this is an opportunity to pick this shirt up once a week, once a month, put it on, and walk out in public, and it's making a difference because the culture is not receiving life-affirming messages. Mm -hmm. You know, we had talked about 82% said that if they had one life-affirming encounter from someone, it's because they're not receiving any life-affirming encounters. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Why are we are we so politically correct, so tolerant that we're frozen? We know when mm -hmm. someone might be having a difficulty with a with a pregnancy. Are are we are we just so afraid to even intervene and sit down and look at them in the eye? I mean, I mean, should we text them at least? I mean, and I'm trying to be somewhat facetious, I suppose, about this because we're so caught up in yes. our gizmos that we yes. don't even talk to one another as that much anymore. Recent, just a few weeks ago, we had an encounter. We, one of our, the centers that we support sent us the story. They said there was a young college couple that came into a pregnancy resource center. They saw their ultrasound. Now, 64% of abortion-minded mothers that see their ultrasound choose life, but that means 36% don't. So they were in the category that they left. Mm -hmm. and they went to an abortion facility in Kansas. And while they're sitting there, what you just said, Doug, is exactly what happened. The man who was silent, silent as consent, texts text his girlfriend that said, I don't want to kill our baby. And she writes back, I never did want to. Oh, oh man. Hmm. I never did. So men, be men. Yeah. I mean, we were built to be providers and protectors. Yeah. And silence is consent. If you think, oh, it's her choice, I just need to be quiet, let her. Ch no, she's waiting for you to reach out and say, hey, you can do this and I'll help. So we are pro life missionaries. Life Runners is another great opportunity to put your pro life faith in action. You know, for those that are getting ready for the March for Life, we've got that March for Life 5K at 8 a.m. that morning. Mm -hmm. If you want just one more opportunity for redemptive running, walking, and cheering. And for those on the West Coast that are going to the San Francisco Walk for Life, 7 a.m. in Golden Gate Park, we're going to have the first, the inaugural Father Malloy 5K. No, so, and you, you've had your first pro life half marathon. We did this past. Oh fall okay. in Jefferson City, Missouri. So, so Charla, are you going to do a <laughs> full marathon then? Is that coming next? You know, so I, I did the full at Air Force. No, but, but are, is Life Runners going to put one on? Pro no. life 
marathon. Yeah, you did. Before we, we'll think mm. about no, it. She, yeah. She huh? defensive <laughs> half. Yes, I did. I mean, I just I skipped the half marathon. I yeah. went straight to the full. Oh, so okay, I think okay. that's a great idea, actually. Yeah, yeah. Pat, what do you think about yeah. that? Do a full marathon. I think that's a good let's idea. Really ramp it up here. The half is a really popular distance, which is why we started with that. Yeah, just we'll call it the full Boston Life Runners <laughs> Marathon. <laughs> <laughs> a little competition for the Boston Marathon. Yeah. We've we've got this creed, and if you know, if I'm ever short on time when I'm visiting with folks about life mm -hmm. runners, if I only have a couple minutes, I say, you know what? If I only have two minutes, let's pray this creed. Let's together. do that right now. We got about four minutes into the, the show, so let's go ahead. We and can do, pray do it, and then maybe you, give some final comments. Yeah, you go ahead and just we'll just kind of sit so, quiet and meditate. So if you're as you that's it. So if you're sitting at your computer, you can go to liferunners.org uh, and hit the creed button. So it says. It says prayer, so liferunners.org backslash creed, and you'll find this beautiful prayer, and you'll also see St. Pio there and see why he is our patron saint. So this is the prayer. We believe in the dignity of all human, human life, life from conception, conception to natural, natural death. death. We, we run, run as, as a prayer, prayer to, to defend, defend children in the, in the womb, womb so, that so that they, they may be born and united, united with our Christian community. community. We, we run, run to, to build, build endurance, endurance, for the race is long, and we must keep our eyes fixed on you, Lord. We, we run, run for awareness, so our culture will view all human life as a reflection of your glory, Lord. We, we run for charity, to provide support for mothers, mothers and fathers tempted to abort their child, and healing support for post-abortive women, men, and families. We run to end abortion, for Christ died so that all may live. Guard us all, born and unborn, with your peace, Lord, for in you life is victorious. We, we pray, pray and run, run in your, your name, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. St. Pio, pray, pray for, for us. us. And on the front of this creed is, is a beautiful crisis pregnancy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people yeah. don't think of, you know, Mary hmm. and Jesus as a crisis pregnancy, but it certainly was a crisis to St. Joseph. Yeah. And so she's a great role model to remind us, um, thank goodness for her fiat, for choosing life. It started with a yes. All of us are here because of our yes to God. We hope that everyone listening realizes ages one to 88, they can join the Life Runners. Right. You get online, liferunners.org, buy a shirt that says, remember the unborn, and you wear it anywhere in public, and you're a good Life Runner. Excellent. Charlotte, you got any closing quick comments to anybody out there to try to encourage them to join in in the Life Runners? I would just say, yeah, if you're feeling that call to do something more for pro-life, mm -hmm. this is definitely a good way to start just wear the shirt, yeah. have some conversations, reach out to women that you know. Any encouragement to golfers out there to convert? <laughs> oh, the right? golfers. Keep oh, yeah. Um, keep your head down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep your eye on the ball. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, guys, great work. Fantastic. And Pat, thanks. Charlotte, thank you for coming. And uh, I hope you know, we get a chance to get you back on the show in the future and you can tell us how it's growing from 3,000 to, to 30,000. Something Perfect. massive. That's yeah. It. I <laughs> love the fact you're expanding the relay. You've got relay coming from four different locations, ladies and gentlemen. Go out to liferunners.org. Check it out. Get, get yourself out. included in this. Uh, spread the word. Tell others about it. It's another fantastic way to fight the good fight. Mm. You know, First Timothy all right, 118. Fight the good fight. Be strong in this battle because the Lord... Psalm 144, verse 1, Blessed be the Lord, my God, my rock, my strength. He's trained my arms for battle and my fingers for war. You probably put feet in there, too, right? That's how we do it with the feet. So, uh, Father, as only you can take us out. All right. Well, may our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you. May He give you His peace. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week.